Spokane listens when business talks. Welcome to Business Talks, the region's only local business talk show with your host, Ryan McNeese. Business Talks is brought to you by our friends at STCU and Well-Dressed Walrus. Now, let's get down to business with Business Talks. Welcome to Business Talks. I'm Ryan McNeese, and we're here in the studio with Lynn Parrish, Deputy Editor of the Business Journal. Thank you for being here, Lynn. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ryan. Well, you've uh, been really good to us coming in on several occasions to chat with me about Business Talks. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about travel and tourism, transportation, healthcare industry. Where do you want to start? Yeah, let's start with uh, travel and tourism. And, okay. and, and kind of the impetus for my suggestions uh, today is our uh, market fact book that we uh, just published this week. So that's just that's, coming out. Mm-hmm, yeah, it, it comes out tomorrow as we speak. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So once again, I'm bringing contraband into the studio. It's perfect. So, yeah, yeah, works for us. And, uh, and so this is uh, the result of months of research by a handful of our team and uh, uh, culminating with uh, just under 100 different charts and graphs, 2,400 data points. And hmm. uh, uh, some of the more interesting data this year and some of the more recent data uh, has, has to do with uh, the travel and tourism, the, the, the visitor information, right. which we received right before we, right before we went to press with it. So that's exciting. Tell, yeah. what, what is that information uh, telling us right now? I mean, I think any city USA, whether it be via their chamber of commerce or, or other drivers of tourism, they're going to be interested in what is bringing what – are, what are some of the reasons that folks are coming to Spokane? And obviously it's probably cyclical in terms of why are they here in the summer versus why are they here in the spring or winter – what are some of those data points telling sure. us? And, you know, and one of the factors that uh, y- you and I might not be fully aware of mm-hmm. uh, is, is what conventions are going on in right. town. And that, that uh, varies widely from year to year. It can be related to uh, other economic trends, but it not, isn't always. Mm-hmm. So uh, what we saw, if you look at um, the numbers from Visit Spokane, uh, they commission a study annually that – um, looks at the total number of visitors and how much they spend in Spokane. Last year, the total number of visitors was up from the previous year. They estimate, and we're talking all, all types of visitors, uh, uh, they estimate 3.4 uh, million, or excuse me, 3.55 million hmm. visitors last year compared to 3.4 million the year before. And that must be through, Is that statistic come from hotel stays, et cetera? Yeah, you know, um, a, a few different uh, formulas that their, that their consultant uses. Now, uh, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around 3.55 million people right. coming to Spokane. Uh, when you kind of eyeball it, it, it sounds high. But that would be an average of uh, 9,700 people per day in Spokane who don't live here, basically. Mm. And I could buy that. Right. I, could, I could buy that. Yeah, that, that, when it's broken yeah. down into some manageable numbers. Yeah, and, and you picture that number is, is so much higher during a Bloom's Day mm-hmm. or, a, or a Hoop Fest. Absolutely. And, uh, and so, so that is trending up. Interestingly enough, data from a, a completely separate uh, uh, study and a separate source, the Spokane Airports, shows a, a similar mm-hmm. trend in terms of, of passengers. Uh, both arriving and departing. So their numbers, uh, they had 3.23 million people uh, uh, boarding or arriving on a plane at Spokane International Airport. Well, and I think it goes without saying, who's going to be interested in that data? A whole host of folks, but clearly hotels want to know the upwards, downward trends, restaurant industry. is there anecdotal uh, evidence or conversations as to whether it be the restaurant industry or hotel industry? What are they saying about this uh, type of information? Well, they're, they're seeing increases in, in, in business. We okay. know that much uh, through room tax revenue, through taxable retail sales. They're definitely seeing uh, increased business. What the numbers suggest for 2016 is that the, uh, we saw more leisure recreational travel hmm. that year than it was uh, convention uh, uh, business yeah uh, the if you they break out the annual uh, uh, spending by 
convention and event attendees, okay. and it actually dropped last year uh, compared for to conventions. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, con convention and events, and uh, what I think Visit Spokane would tell you, it is it, that can vary depending on what the events are. So in 2015, that summer, you might remember uh, that Spokane hosted the World Science Fiction. Yeah convention mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that bumped up the numbers for 2015 whereas there wasn't a single event of that magnitude that uh, Spokane hosted last year right uh, so that, is, that's going to make a pretty big uptick in the, the numbers right mm -hmm. right yeah yeah so it's uh, it's a, a pretty interesting trend and uh, and it's interesting that the uh, airline passenger numbers uh, which aren't aren't exactly apples to apples with mm -hmm. total visitor spending, but it's interesting that they follow the same trajectory. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think that's obviously a, it's, it's good news for our area. Clearly it's not going the other way. Right. Uh, and an upward uh, trend. And as we, as we get in here to the summer months, I mean, I think it's a little surprise to our listeners that uh, our lakes in this area, whether it be right here in Spokane, Outline, Coeur d'Alene, Ponderé, Priest, Diamond, etc. Uh, I, I think the vibe is that we're getting more and more folks, good or bad, that are figuring out this is a pretty good place to be. <laughs> yeah, there, there's Depends no doubt on who that you that's talk the case. To, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll err on the side of good, uh, but but it's it's definitely the case, and uh, uh, you see. Uh, that reflected in some of the, which we've talked about in the past, mm -hmm. some of the home sales numbers and how uh, home sales are up at the same time that apartment vacancies are 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 down, which right. suggests both are are in demand. Yeah, so, which yeah. is an, it's not often the case, and we do talk about real estate quite a bit on this show. And and when you have an opportunity to be in the studio, everyone I talk to right now, it, it, it certainly appears that the real estate market in Spokane is hot right now yeah. that I, yeah. I think it's it's doing really well homes are not staying on the market very long no and and it's it's the byproduct of of a mature uh, uh economic cycle mm -hmm. of, a cycle of economic growth uh we have uh in the market Factbook we have some market observations where we have experts in different fields write a very brief item about some of the data and okay, so what, they're basically assessing the statistics. That yeah, are, okay. yeah, or, or, or uh, supplementing them with some of their own statistics. And one of the people who wrote for us is uh, Jennifer Valerian, who is the uh, president of the Spokane yeah. Association of Realtors right yeah, now. Yeah, I met Jennifer. And uh, she's talking about, in her piece, uh, talks about inventory a lot. And that's, that's what it's all about in home sales right now, yep. it sounds is like. Is the inventory it's, up? Is the inventory down? Yeah, and it's it's pretty tight. As, yeah. as of when she wrote it, there was about two months of inventory, the meaning uh, the, at, the, at the current home sales pace, there, was only an, there were only enough homes on the market to, to absorb two months' worth of sales. More average is six months, hmm. so, so it's interesting. Well, and, you know, we're talking about different statistics and different drivers within our uh, micro economy here in Spokane mm -hmm. versus the macro of the United States. Let's talk about health care a little bit. What are oh, we, sure. What are, we seeing, what are we seeing there? Well, you know, it's interesting because the, uh, some of the data that we use in the Market Factbook is census data for the, for the hospitals, which is inpatient discharges. And it doesn't take into account any emergency room. Uh, care or any of their satellite locations, and those were mostly flat to down, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. One of the things that we've seen in healthcare over recent years is is a, a push to pe get people coming to the emergency room only when necessary, and and staying in the hospital only when necessary. Right. It's one of the reasons we're seeing more. You know, we've always had urgent care, but we're seeing more express care centers and, and that yeah sort we of certainly thing. are that's yeah, interesting yeah. and so so we're seeing i think when you look at those numbers what you're seeing is some of that effort paying off uh, a, a, a bit of a not diversion but rather uh there's different variables been, being put in place that drive some of those statistics Sure. That, that are newer, maybe to the healthcare market. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and it's 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 all about in that market. It appears to be largely about um, uh, 
diversifying the the the, the methods of healthcare delivery, mm-hmm. and 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 that would include some of the virtual care that we see these yeah. days, which works great, by the way. Well, that's interesting yeah. when you said that word; it resonated with me because I hear uh, other folks within healthcare use that delivery mm-hmm. word. That sure. hey, we are going to deliver healthcare, but are we going to deliver it in a different way? Whether sure. it's in an urban setting or some of our smaller communities around Spokane, I've. I've heard that uh, that word. Yeah. Uh, that maybe there's just different ways of efficiently, effectively delivering that right, healthcare. Right. Right. And and you know it it's it's mm-hmm. not so long ago that if someone didn't have insurance, they might just go to the emergency room because that's the way they're going to receive care. And maybe they would have gone to the emergency room when they absolutely had to, as opposed to getting a condition treated when it was. Uh, uh, not as bad as it had become. Right. So before, in other words, getting a, a condition treated prior to becoming an emergency. So mm-hmm. all of these things are, are positive steps uh, uh, for the for the healthcare sector. One of the things we did see this year, and and I don't have a reason why, um, we saw an increase in uh, uh, frequency with the most common causes of death and mm. an increase in in certain diseases. And uh, if, if I may, I'll just back up and tell yeah. you a little bit about the data. The data comes from the, the Spokane Regional Health District. It lags two or three years, so it's really hard to say that this data that we're talking about translates to what's happening right Something right, that right specifically yeah. happened in January 2016 was correlated directly to this. might yeah. not match up. Perfectly. Right. And so this data that we're talking about is 2014, 2015 okay. data. Uh, but we did see uh, the, the most common causes of death uh, rank stays basically the same. Uh, and it's, uh, it starts with uh, heart disease, cancer, and, uh, and uh, goes on from there. Accidental death is in the top four, which I would not have, hmm. have guessed. Yeah, yeah, not to be a downer. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk to the top five of ways to die here on Business Talks. But, the, <laughs> but, the, but, um, but uh, in each of those categories, the frequency has increased. And I, hmm. and I don't know why that, why that is exactly. We also saw uh, increases in uh, communicable diseases and uh, um, in some of the low birth weight in infants. And, right. and so when I see that sort of thing, I wonder, you know, is, is it a situation where the numbers are being reported more thoroughly than they have in the past, mm-hmm. or is it a situation where uh, um, something has actually changed right. in the marketplace? Right, again, what are those statistics actually saying? Right. We, we right. know that there may be an uptick or a downtick, but why and how and what do they say? Sure. What, what goes into that statistic? Let's take a short break here with Lynn Parrish, Deputy Editor of the Business Journal. Come right back after the break on Business Talks. Sounds good. In touch, online all the time. SpokaneTalksOnline.com What is a credit union? It's a cooperative, like a food co-op or a housing co-op, but the members share money. Credit unions offer the same services you'll find in a bank, but they're different from banks. First, credit unions are owned by their members, and credit unions are not for profit. Any money the credit union makes goes right back to the members in the form of low fees and good rates. To learn more, you can go to STCU's blog at stcumoney.org. Home. That word means so much more than its four letters suggest. R. That letter stands alone. When you see someone wearing a blue block R, you're talking with a realtor. Your local neighborhood realtor can help you find your first home, your next home, or help you sell the one you have. Next time you think home, think Realtor. The brand makes the difference. This message brought to you by the members of the Spokane Association of Realtors. What is that you're holding? The Spokesman Review? Is it really even a factor in driving customer traffic anymore? Sure is. Here, close your eyes. And imagine a few people with $5 bills in their hands standing outside the door of your business. I see them. I like it. 
People with money. What's your point? Five dollars isn't that much. I know. But what if there were 300,000 people yeah, in front okay. of your door with five dollar bills in their hands? Well, now you got my attention. That's one and a half million dollars. 300,000 people. Where'd they come from? Yeah, that's how many different people read the Spokesman Review every week in print, online, or on their mobile. Wow, that's impressive. All you got to do is invite them in. Run some ads. The Spokesman Review has 300,000 readers a week? That's amazing. I had no idea. Most people don't. That's why we're running this ad. In print and online, the Spokesman Review delivers customers for your business. Welcome back to Business Talks. I'm Ryan McNeese, and we're here with Lynn Parrish, Deputy Editor of the Business Journal. Lynn, thank you. Uh, right before we left, we were talking about uh, health care and what sure. are some of the numbers in health care telling us. Uh, and it, it is always interesting with statistics. Uh, we can look at the, the market book of uh, hundreds and hundreds of different indicators, mm-hmm. but assessing the psychology and the elements that make up those statistics really is the analysis and the interesting part. Uh, what, are, what are some issues uh, or what are the statistics saying right now uh, in, in retail sales? And, and maybe is that correlated to what we're seeing in terms of the overall traffic to Spokane right now? Well, it, you know, it, it sure could be, but independent mm. of that traffic, uh, we're seeing a, a, a healthy increase in, mm. in retail sales. And, and, and the way we get that is through uh, taxable retail sales receipts, basically. Sure. Those numbers come from the state, and, uh, and they're uh, uh, pretty current and, and uh, uh, appear to be uh, pretty accurate. And so, so when we picture retail sales, we're picturing things we buy at a retail store, but it actually applies to uh, construction materials and business-to-business type things. So when you look at those numbers, it's not just showing you the health of the retail sector. It's it's showing a broader... I'm I'm glad you're clarifying that because it it isn't just maybe as you're indicating, it isn't uh, the retail outlets traditionally that you might see at Riverfront Park Square or it, it might include... XYZ Lumber Company, Hardware Store, Home Depot, sure. uh, a, a broader swath of actual retail sales. It does. And it certainly does include that, uh, that retail element yeah, as, yeah. as well. But, uh, but, it, but it is broader than that. Uh, one of the interesting things that we, we saw in this past year was that uh, taxable retail sales uh, in the county overall mm-hmm. and in the city of Spokane Valley grew at a greater rate than the city of Spokane and and the state as a whole. So really, uh, um, of course, we're we're a small piece of that pie, but uh, but our rate of growth is 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 greater. Would than, it, any thoughts or folks that you're familiar with that have a nothing theory? concrete to be honest with you, Ryan? But uh, uh, some of the areas that we see really healthy gains are uh, auto sales. Hmm. You know, uh, and there uh, there's a, a large presence of that in yeah. Spokane Valley. There is in the city of Spokane as yeah. well, but but in the valley, uh, a couple. Yeah, other... and a good point. I mean, just from a mathematical statistical basis, it's a high dollar sale. Right, right, and uh, a few other areas that we saw big gains: uh, electronics and appliances. Uh, uh, management and health, or excuse me, uh, health services. We saw saw healthy gains. Something that you don't really think of as a as a retail sale, right. but 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 you're paying on it, and uh, and we saw uh, uh, corresponding with that uh, big increase at uh, drug stores and and health stores. So your nutrition stores and that sort yeah, of yeah. That so. that's an interesting one yeah, to me. Yeah. Now that's not, of course, just related to Spokane Valley or right. or the or the county as a whole. Um, but it does show you how broad the the um, increase is. Yeah. yeah, and how broad the statistical data is. How many folks within your uh, office handle this accumulation or aggregating of, of the statistics? Uh, well, you know, because uh, I'm I'm impressed by that alone with the market book coming out uh, tomorrow. Uh, that's a healthy endeavor to aggregate this information. Sure, sure. Uh, everybody has a hand in it uh, in terms of our news team, which is, is six people. Uh, each person touches it in some way. 
Uh, Sam Howard, our research mm-hmm. assistant, is is really the person who who heads it up, and, and I'm close. I work closely with Sam on that, yeah. uh, and so she and I uh, really lead that effort. But it, but everybody has at least touched it yeah. before it's all has done. their yeah. piece of the puzzle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean that how how many months in advance of some of this information coming into your newsroom does this start to be put together we start around november of the previous year oh, so geez. yeah, yeah we, we, with different. what we can and then and then it it uh, uh builds steam and mm-hmm. really get locked in on it march march and april well so. i hope i hope folks here in our community uh spokane spokane valley but also throughout our region quite frankly Coeur d'Alene included take the time to to really go through this uh uh I, I, I'm almost sensing a professor or a teacher telling us this is information the kids should be looking at. But, <laughs> but truly, it probably a hard sell right off the bat that hey, here's a magazine full of statistical facts. You ought to really uh, take a look at this. But I, I joke. But this information aggregated from so many different areas of our economy mm-hmm. really does say a lot. And I think for for business minded folks, that folks that have business interests, which is very broad in many different ways, really do need to understand what are these numbers saying, what are they saying for them personally, but what is it saying for their business, uh, their nonprofit, sure. uh, the school district. These these numbers are telling us something, and I I, I appreciate uh, the Business Journal really taking on this endeavor of putting this together. Yeah, it's thank a big you. Task. Well, appreciate it. And, you know, uh, one of the biggest sections in our first section is demographics, mm-hmm. which isn't directly business-related. It's very important for the business community, but um, there's information in there that, that really paints a picture of what our yeah. uh, uh, community is. And yeah. so we're looking at uh, uh, business-related topics like median household income mm-hmm. and uh, and the taxable retail sales, of course. But we also look at uh, population trends. So we're looking at population below the poverty line, educational attainment, uh, and uh, 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 diversity in our, our community and that sort of thing. Uh, it's interesting because in our market, there are more uh, uh, high school graduates than the uh, and people with some college than the mm-hmm. state average, but fewer people with a bachelor's degree or higher than the state that's average. Interesting and so I think too. I think that's something that uh, people in the education sector are very well aware of, mm-hmm. and and something that is uh, uh, helping them to form goals on mm. on how to get people to that point of finishing a four-year degree right. when, when appropriate. You know, and I think that, again, is why I'm interested in these facts, is what do they mean? And then once you have a theory on what they mean, how can you turn those statistics into an actual plan? Sure. Whether it be in the ex- uh, education field, how can you turn that information into something you can uh, move that statistic forward, more uh, bachelor's degrees, et cetera? Sure. So, you know, what can you tangibly do with, with this information, I think you make a good point. Whether it's of interest for the business community or the population at, at large, this is the community we live in. And I, sure. I spoke to Rob Curley, editor of The Spokesman, last yeah. week, and we, I think we're, I think three of us, but we're all very glass half full on Spokane sure. and, and would argue that some of these news sources outside, the challenge to these folks would be give Spokane a chance, give Spokane an opportunity to, once you're here and have an opportunity to see it, feel it, understand these statistics, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good place to be. It is. And, um, and the interesting thing about the, um, looking at the population statistics is that, um, it, it really does paint a more, a more complete picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you can see if you look at past years compared to this year, you know, the, big bubble of, and you look at uh, demograph or age of right. our population, and you see this, uh, the number of people who are 65 plus is just, you know, you see this big group of baby boomers moving through, not specific to Spokane, not exclusive to Spokane, sure. but, but still but interesting to look at. But certainly part of the puzzle. And it, and it does, uh, it does raise, and it does raise some, some more uh, critical questions. Uh, uh, when you look at the, uh, uh, percentage of our population that lives below the poverty line, mm-hmm. uh, it's increased 
uh, this year compared to, or in 2016 compared to the previous year. Well, and that's unfortunate. As, as I say, we're glass half full about Spokane. It certainly doesn't mean without its challenges. Sure. And, and I, I'm actually, I appreciate you bringing that up. What, what are those numbers telling us? Well, it, it could be telling us a couple of different things. Uh, one is I think it would take a, 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 a better look at uh, or a closer look at how those numbers are, are figured. So it's, mm-hmm. it's all based on median income and percentages of median okay. income to determine poverty. So, so as median income has, uh, or average household income has increased, uh, though, has, has that bar gotten higher to where uh, a, a larger number of people fall under it? That's a good point. It, it certainly could be. It certainly That's could be point. part of it at least. But, um, uh, you know, when you, when you talk about uh, – uh, low-income households or, or homelessness. You know, we, we were uh, talking earlier uh, off-camera about the uh, homelessness study that came out uh, yesterday uh, that showed an 11% increase in homelessness. Now, the city's very quick to say that, well, we, we had these shelters open that brought in more people, so we just had more better, just better data than we right. had in the past. So there hasn't literally been an 11% increase in Homelessness, it's just our count was more complete than it's exactly. been in the past. Yeah. So there's uh, something more to the statistics there. But it does tell you that we do have our challenges, especially mm-hmm. when you put it in the context of a uh, of the fact that we're in a mature uh, cycle of economic growth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Lynn, thank you. Always appreciate being here. Hope you come back soon. Let's chat about other areas of our uh, economy. But one more time, though, where can folks find uh, uh, the market book? And is it, it's coming out tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, so it's, uh, if you subscribe to the Journal of Business or buy one on the stands, it's, it's included uh, with the uh, May 25th edition. And if not, uh, swing on by. We'll be happy to sell you one. Well, perfect. Everybody go out and get one. There's a lot of important information in there. Thank you for watching Business Talks. Business Talks is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksOnline.com, which is solely responsible for its content. Ask a question, recommend a guest, and hear this program again online anytime at SpokaneTalksOnline.com. Business Talks is brought to you by our friends at STCU and Well-Dressed Walrus. Business Talks wishes you good business and a good day. In study after study, money is often cited as one of the top conflict points in a marriage. Finances can be an emotional topic for couples, especially when money is tight. So it pays to get in the habit of discussing it on a regular basis, even if you keep separate finances. At stcumoney.org, find six tips for making the conversation easy. Hey, this is Kurt Stockwell with Well-Dressed Walrus. We are a local website design and development company here in Spokane. What we do is build beautiful, usable websites for local businesses. The website needs to be beautiful. It needs to be usable for your users, your customers, and yourself. Contact us anytime. We'd love to talk with you about your online marketing.